Now let me discuss the action of the anticholinergic drugs on the glands. Now if you take this particular anticholinergic drugs, remember they will decrease the secretions, right? They will decrease the salivary secretion, they will decrease the sweat secretion and they will also decrease the lacrimation. So remember this anticholinergic drugs, they will decrease the secretions. So the secretions which are all decreased is salivation is reduced, lacrimation is reduced, right? And even the sweat secretion is also reduced. So it will decrease the salivation, sweat and as well as the lacrimation. Now because it is reducing the salivary secretion, these particular anticholinergic drugs, they will cause dry mouth. Right? These particular anticholinergic drugs, they will cause dry mouth. <coughs> now, among all these particular drugs, very particularly you take this particular atropine. Atropine is a drug which is contraindicated in children. Right? Atropine is a drug which is contraindicated in children. Next. Why is this particular drug contraindicated in children is this atropine has the risk of causing hyperthermia in children. So because of risk of hyperthermia, right, because of the risk of hyperthermia, this atropine is contraindicated in children. Now why do you think this particular the atropine will cause hyperthermia is because atropine will decrease the sweating of the individual. Right? Atropine will decrease the sweating of the individual. So that is the reason why it will cause hyperthermia and thereby it is contraindicated in children. Next. Now apart from this, now let me discuss some other uses of this anticholinergic drugs. Right? Other uses of anticholinergic drugs. If you take the other uses of the anticholinergic drugs, we have what is called as botulinum toxin. Right? This botulinum toxin, it is of two types. Right? Botulinum toxin, which is an anticholinergic drug. Right? It is of two types. Like type A botulinum toxin, and as well as type B botulinum toxin. You take this type A botulinum toxin. This has been approved for the treatment of strabismus. Right? This has been approved for the treatment of strabismus. That is a disorder of the eye. Then it is also approved for the treatment of Blepharospasm, right? Also approved for the treatment of blepharospasm. And next, cervical dystonia, right? Cervical dystonia. And as well as, this has also been approved for the treatment of the lines over the glabella, that is, glabellar lines, right? That is, glabellar lines. So this botulinum toxin is approved, type A toxin is used, used for the treatment of strabismus, blepharospasm, cervical dystonia and as well as glabellar, glabellar lines. Next you take the type B botulinum toxin. This has been approved for the treatment of only cervical dystonia. So in the treatment of Right? In the treatment of cervical dystonia, type B botulinum toxin is being utilized. So, in the other uses, like we have discussed about the uses of botulinum toxin A and as well as botulinum toxin B. Next, we have another important substance which is called as Ona botulinum toxin A. So, if you take this particular Ona botulinum toxin A, this has been recently approved to prevent the headache. Right? It has been recently approved to prevent 
the onset of headache right to prevent the onset of headache particularly in adult patients with chronic migraine right particularly in adult patients with chronic migraine so in this group of individuals to prevent headache the onabotulinum toxin a is being used and this onabotulinum toxin a this is given every 12 weeks as multiple injections right this is given for every 12 weeks in the form of right in the form of multiple injections next the other use is like the usage of the atropine in the mushroom poisoning atropine is considered as the drug of choice right atropine is considered as the drug of choice for early mushroom poisoning due to inocybe species right so this is the drug of choice for right for early mushroom poisoning right due to which particular species due to a species called inocybe right due to inocybe species now a point that you should remember is atropine is used in the treatment of mushroom poisoning of only inocybe species whereas it is contraindicated in case of mushroom poisoning due to amanita muscaria right so this is contraindicated in mushroom poisoning due to amanita muscaria uh, next now what do we give then for the treatment of amanita muscaria what do we give i'll discuss about this whereas like we have another important substance which is called thiotic acid right which is called as the thiotic acid you take this thiotic acid this is useful for late mushroom poisoning due to amanita phalloids right due to mushroom poisoning due to amanita phalloids this thiotic acid is being used right amanita phalloids this thiotic acid is being used right and this amanita phalloids remember it mainly causes what is called late mushroom poisoning right late mushroom poisoning next this particular thiotic acid is not only used in the treatment of late mushroom poisoning due to amanita phalloids this thiotic acid remember it is also the drug of choice for organophosphate and as well as the organocarbamate poisoning right this is also used for the treatment of the organophosphate and organo carbamate poisoning next the other important thing is now you take this thiotic acid this thiotic acid is used along with neostigmin why because when you are using this particular neostigmin the neostigmin has excess amount of the muscarinic side effects so in order to reduce the muscarinic side effects of neostigmin we use thiotic acid along with neostigmin for the treatment of myasthenia gravis and as well as the cobra bite right so in case of myasthenia gravis actually the drug what we are giving is the physostigmin and as well as neostigmin now this thio thiotic acid it is added right thiotic acid it is added along with or added to the 
न्यूस्टिगमिन फॉर वॉट फॉर द ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ माइस्तीनिया ग्रेविस एंड एज वेल एज द कोबरा बाइट now why do you want to add along with the neostigmin because mainly to decrease the muscarinic effects okay so mainly to reduce the muscarinic effects we use or we add thiotic acid along with the neostigmin next not only along with neostigmin remember this particular thiotic acid is also added to diphen oxalate to reduce its addictive potential now where do we use this diphenoxalate diphenoxalate it is used as an anti motility drug right so this thiotic acid along with diphenoxalate right why do we add along with diphenoxalate mainly to reduce the addictive potential okay to reduce the addictive potential now this particular diphenoxalate it is used as an anti motility drug right it is mainly used as an anti motility drug okay so these are some of the other uses of the anti cholinergic drugs like we have onobotulinum toxin a it is used to prevent the headache in adult patients with chronic migraine this is given for every 12 weeks in the form of multiple injections this atropine it is considered as the drug of choice in case of early mushroom poisoning due to inosib species but this is contraindicated due to mushroom poisoning caused by amanita muscaria you take thiotic acid it is given in the treatment of mushroom poisoning of amanita phalloids right it will cause late mushroom poisoning and this is also used in the treatment of organophosphate and as well as organo carbamate poisoning next you take this thiotic acid along with neostigmin it is used in the treatment of myasthenia gravis and cobra bite and we add along with neostigmin mainly to reduce the muscarinic adverse effects and this is also added along with diphenoxalate which is an anti motility drug mainly to reduce the addictive potential caused by diphenoxalate now now let me discuss about what will be the clinical features of mushroom poisoning and how do we treat the mushroom poisoning 